everybody, and welcome back to the Orange Coast College Planetarium at Home. I'm Scott Mitchell, the Planetarium Director, and we have another cool program for you today. So last time we looked at the stars and constellations and what you would be able to spot out in the sky uh, tonight. And today we are going to be focusing more on how the sky changes, on how the things that we see up there move around. So let's go ahead and jump right into Stellarium again, that free program that we used last time to map out the sky. And you'll see that we have our sky set up for evening time, uh, set up for just after nine o'clock tonight. So if you go out nine o'clock, this is where everything will be. Over in the west, we've got Canis Major, our big dog, and Orion just barely above the horizon still. Canis Minor, the little dog, Gemini, the twins. There's Venus, or that one's Venus, that's Capella. This is Venus. We've got our two bears, our Ursa Major, the big bear, and Ursa Minor, the little bear, also known as the Big Dipper and Little Dipper. We've got Leo the lion, Virgo the maiden, Corvus the crow, our herdsman slash ice cream cone, Boates, Corona Borealis, and that's, I think that's all the ones that we talked about last time. So at 9 o'clock, this is where all of them should be but as you probably know the sky doesn't stay the same for very long in fact it's constantly looking like it's moving if we speed up our clock a little bit we'll see that the stars do much the same as the sun they rise in the east and set in the west and so if we let this run for you know a couple hours we'll see we stop here just after midnight, that everything has shifted over towards the west a little bit. Leo, which used to be way up here in the middle of the sky, is now closer to the western horizon. Boates, which was not that high over in the east, is now almost directly overhead. And our dippers have definitely moved too. The big dipper has swung down over to here, and the little dipper has pivoted it spins around on that star there because remember Polaris is the north star and it's the only one in the sky that doesn't move it'll stay right there everything kind of spins around it because that star is directly above the north pole of the earth so over the course of just a couple of hours a little bit more than three hours from nine o'clock to just after midnight everything has shifted over towards the west and if we continue with that and speed up time some more and let the clock run out we'll see eventually the sun start to come up over there in the east swing across the sky and set over here in the west again and then we can see our constellations they're still invisible to us because the sun's up and it's blocking out the light from those stars but we know that's where they are in the sky and as soon as the sun goes down we'll see that their their stars start to pop up once it gets dark just like that and so now we're about 24 hours later uh at about 8 30 so almost nine o'clock so over the course of a day, the sky goes through this cycle. It seems to turn all the way around us. And that's what ancient people thought was actually going on. They thought that the sun and all of the stars were moving around the earth in these great big circles. And they really had no way of knowing any better. That's certainly what it looks like is going on. But it would take many, many hundreds of years until we develop technology like the telescope or rockets that allow us to actually reach outer space before we could see what's really going on with our planet. And so, of course, we know today that it's the Earth spinning around. The Earth spins on its axis once every 24 hours, which makes it look like the sky is moving. Now, it's hard to show that when you're standing here on the Earth. So we're going to switch over to another program that'll help us get an astronaut's eye view. This is a worldwide telescope, and you can see we're hovering above the unfinished planetarium uh, there at Orange Coast College. 
but we're not interested in the ground. We're going to zoom up away from the planetarium so we can see all of our campus, Orange Coast College, all of Costa Mesa, most of Orange County now. There's Los Angeles, Southern California, big chunk of the United States, Mexico, almost all of North America, and there's planet Earth, our home floating there in space. Now we can see that half of the Earth is lit up nice and brightly. The side that faces towards the sun is where it's daytime. And then the other side over here is where it's dark. That's where it's nighttime. Because the Earth is round, the sun, which we can see just over there in the distance, can only light up half the surface of the Earth at a time. And that division right down the middle, the line between day and night, we call the Terminator. And so there's us in Southern California right there in the middle. And if we speed up the rotation of the Earth, we can see where we are slip into that darkness. And it's, it sounds much more dramatic than it is. All that happens is the sun goes down and it becomes nighttime, just like it does every single day. And if we swing around to the other side, we can see North America starting to come up again. And there's California right there. So there we are, and it's another new shiny day. Now, since we're all standing on the Earth, we're essentially stuck on the ground, we spin with it. And so it looks to us like all of the other things in the sky are moving around us, when in fact it's really us spinning around in circles every day. Now, the Earth does more than just spin. It also orbits. It travels around the sun. Now, if we spin around here so we can see the Sun and Earth at the same time, there we go, we can see that the lit up side of the Earth is facing away from us now because it has to face towards the Sun, and the dark side of the Earth is facing towards us uh, on our screens. Now, we're moving fast enough so that the Earth is spinning and we can see it spinning. But if we want the sun to move, we're going to have to go even faster. Now I want to point out this little cluster of stars right over here. This blue cluster of stars called the Pleiades. And it's relatively close to where the sun is. If we speed up time, we'll see the sun starting to move. It'll get closer to that star cluster. There are a couple other things that you can see moving around. Uh, those are the other planets of our solar system, but we're just going to focus on the sun for now. So now that we've sped up time enough, we can see the sun moving against the background of stars. And we're going very, very, very fast uh, through time right now. Actually, if we spin our view around, we can see how fast the Earth is spinning. Because what we're watching is not the sun moving, but rather the Earth moving and our perspective changing. If we want to see what's really going on, we're going to have to get out even further. Because from there, it still looks like you know, we're staying still and the sun is moving. But if we get far enough out, we can see the orbit of the Earth traced out there, along with the orbits of some of our other planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And now we can much, much more clearly see that the Sun is staying fixed in the middle, and all of the other planets, including the Earth, are traveling in circles around it. So if we zoom back in towards the Earth here, there we go. We can watch over the course of several months as the sun seems to just scoot along against those background stars. We can trace out a line that follows the path that the sun does that we call the ecliptic. So the ecliptic is the line that the sun follows through the sky, keeping in mind that it's not actually the sun moving. But we've figured this out to a degree that we can 
very, very accurately say where the sun is going to be at certain parts of the year, which is why you can see the labels of the months there. So in April, the sun's over there. And then as it moves into May, it's going to swing back by that little blue star cluster we noticed before. And it keeps going around into June, then July, and August. And every single year, this is the same path that the sun takes against the background of stars. Now, there are several special constellations that are very close to the ecliptic that we call the constellations of the zodiac. You may have heard of some of these before. In fact, this one's Leo. We've seen, uh, we've seen Leo already. And the sun passes through these constellations over the course of the year. After Leo comes Virgo, then Libra, then Scorpius, then Ophiuchus up top, Sagittarius is next. And we have Capricornus and Aquarius, followed by Pisces. And Aries and Taurus, Gemini that we've also seen before, and Cancer, and then we're right back to where we were in Leo. So we can say with very high certainty exactly where we expect the sun to be at different times during the year. So in August, we know that the sun is going to be there in Leo. Now this means that in August, we're going to have a very, very hard time seeing Leo because the sun's in the way. Remember, you can't see any of the stars when the sun's up. So all of the stars that are behind the sun will be possible for us to see from the ground. The ones on the other side, though, where it's nighttime, so the, the side of the sky that the nighttime faces is where it's going to be dark. So these constellations over here... Aquarius and Capricornus and Sagittarius are all going to be very easy to see uh, in the middle of the night. And we can see the opposite happen too. If we speed up our time again, we can see the sun traveling around and we'll get it into, say, here in November. So now the sun is in front of the constellation Libra. And now the nighttime side is facing over here towards Taurus and that star cluster, the Pleiades. So at different times during the year, the sun is going to be blocking out different constellations. Now, getting an idea of what that means for us on Earth is harder uh, to see from way up here in space. So let's actually go back down to the ground in Stellarium and see what all of this motion means for us. All right, so we're back on the ground in Stellarium. It is 8.41 p.m., so all of our familiar constellations are up right now. And if we change what time of year it is, we'll change where the sun is and change which constellations the sun is blocking. So actually, first, let's take a look at what constellation the sun is blocking right now. So to do that, obviously, we can't really see anything because the bright blue sky is in the way. Fortunately, in Stellarium, there's a handy little button down here where we can just turn off the atmosphere and get rid of that blanket of air surrounding the planet. And here we can see... There it is. This is the constellation Taurus, the bull. So you can see the bull there and Aries, the ram right there. And the sun is kind of in the middle of those, making it impossible to see them. But like we saw before, if we step forward through time, let's go six months into the future. Now the sun is in front of different constellations. Actually, this is Virgo right here and Libra. So now in November, the sun's in front of Libra and we're blocking out all of these constellations. You might recognize some of them. There's Boates, our ice cream cone herdsman. Uh, let's see, there's uh, the Big Dipper right now is up during the day. But if we fast forward time back to 
48, 48-ish. So this is the same time we were looking at before, but now with totally different constellations. Now we can see there's Orion. Let's light him up. But he's over in the east now. There's Taurus. The constellation that the sun was blocking before is up in the sky. Let's see where else we can find something recognizable. And the only other things we'll be able to find are going to be the ones in the north. Because remember, there's that one star that always stays in the same place right here. That is Polaris. And that's the Little Dipper, Ursa Minor. So where's our Big Dipper? Where has it gone? Well, Ursa Major and our Big Bear is actually now down here below the horizon. And so it'll take another couple of hours for the Big Dipper to come up and swing over so that we can see it in the sky. So even if you go out at 8 o'clock every single night all year, you'll still get to see different constellations showing up in different parts of the sky because as the Earth moves around the Sun, the Sun is going to block out different constellations and the dark side of the Earth, where it's nighttime, is facing a different part of space. So keep that in mind when you're going out stargazing. The uh, familiar patterns that you grow to know and love right now might not be visible in a, a couple months time, but don't you worry, they'll be right back where they were uh, when they come around the next year. So hopefully you enjoyed our program today. We'll hopefully have more of these coming out in the coming weeks. So uh, stay safe, everybody, and have a good one.